Okay, Lindy, Lindy Butts, Butts. Yes. Butts. You are originally from South Africa, but you live in Singapore. Yes, that's right. And your native language is Afrikaans. Afrikaans. But you speak English as if it were your native language. I've gone to English schools my whole life. Yes. Okay. All right. And you live in Singapore, and you have an interest in languages and in Asia. Correct. Correct. Yes. And you speak three Asian languages. Learning a few more than that, but I guess I'm conversational or can help myself in about three or four. Yeah. Okay. So that's interesting. And and by the way, you have a, a YouTube channel where you talk to your uh, viewers about learning languages and give them tips and so yeah. forth. And I'm going to have to subscribe so I can improve my Korean, which is no, <laughs> thank you, lagging behind. But uh, no, it's interesting. So you speak three, and you say you're learning more. And I always think it's interesting the languages that languages that people are learning, because mm. you know that's what that's where we're struggling, and that's where we're trying to get a you know further along, and that's where we may say we speak them, and yet we know in our heart of hearts that we don't speak them as well as we would like to speak them. Mm. So which are the ones that you are learning? I have been learning Korean for about eleven years, ten years, and Japanese since twenty thirteen,、mm -hmm. and then dabbling on and off in Mandarin Chinese, Vietnamese,、uh, Filipino.、Uh, there are so many、uh, Malay, Indonesian,、oh、dabbling、God. in Thai. Yeah, but not that I can have a conversation in those last ones, though. Oh, so you basically your emphasis is Asian languages. I would say so, but recently I've、uh, started becoming more interested in Spanish and Hungarian. So I just started learning Spanish halfway through last year,、right. and I've been dabbling in Hungarian for a while, which I'd love to restart this year.、Mm -hmm. So how do you juggle all these languages—the ones that you'd like to go back and improve, and the new ones that you're exploring or trying to get? <sighs> Totally. That's the question I'd love to ask you as well. So I think I I'm not really one to make language learning schedules. I struggle to stick to them, and I feel really bad if I don't follow a schedule rigorously.、Um, but that's something I'm trying to implement for this year is to see if I can just section off time for each language every day, or、um, you know, one language per day in the week. Right.、Um, so so far that's going well to schedule that time. But mostly the Time I get the most language learning in is when I'm just on my phone, online, on Twitter, on Instagram, watching something on Netflix. Will be in a different language, so、mm -hmm. I just make sure to hear as much as I can in the other languages. Right.、Um, but really, sitting down and studying from a book that is still something I'm trying to work out for myself.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, we can discuss the the difficulties of learning multiple languages.、Um, yeah, I find that. I mean, I would love to go, but I've learned languages that I couldn't speak now. I mean, I, I could get them back pretty quickly, but I learned them for a specific purpose. Like I was going to Romania, or I was going to Greece,、mm. so、I was going to visit the Czech Republic, and then I did okay when I was there. But right now, if you said say something in that language, I can't. But yeah, I could revive it pretty quickly. But I, you know, I feel like that's like my French. I can understand it perfectly fine, but I'm a bit awkward to speak. It's just not coming out as fluidly.、Right. Uh, interesting. I was talking to someone yesterday about.、Um, I, I believe she's British. The lady who translated Hang Gang's vegetarian book into English from Korean. Right. So she can read and write Korean to such an extent that she's able to translate these nuances in the word.、Mm -hmm. But apparently, she's not able to speak it. And that was very interesting to me. And I realized that's actually how a lot of the Korean education system is when teaching English.、Mm -hmm. The students are incredible at、um, doing exams. Learning vocabulary, memorizing rote, but when you speak to them, they will struggle to produce English. But do they do they understand it well when they hear it? I don't know. That's what I'm wondering about. See, surely think, you must. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. That's the part that I'm not sure of. You can read, but I, I'm convinced that anyone who understands well、mm. like, understands if there's a conversation, there's five people all talking in different directions, and they understand everything that's said. I, that person is going to be able to speak. I just don't believe、mm -hmm. that you can be, you can have good listening comprehension, and yeah, yeah. for a good vocabulary, and that you、mm -hmm. are unable to get the words out. I don't. I just don't. I I I have never met such a person.、Mm, we, yeah, I feel if like if you just read, if you can just read, so then you're not really worried about the sounds. I mean, you need、right. sounds to speak. If you have no sounds,、yeah. you can't speak. 
Yes. But you're, if you are able to hear the sounds clearly, well enough to understand, and that you're not able to speak, I, I think that's an unusual situation. Mm -hmm. Could be wrong. So, you know, I mean, speak with mistakes, uh, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my focus is always on listening. And uh, mm. listening is the easiest thing to do. I don't spend as much time on Netflix or on, uh, on my iPhone because, you know, if I'm actually going to work on my language where, you know, I'm not doing something else, then I will read and I'll use link and I'll look up words and I'll plow through the language. The way I, when I was doing, I was going to do Persian, Turkish and Arabic. And so I said, you're going to, you're going to create a hundred links in each language. So that way mm. I was sure that every day I was, not neglecting one of the three. I've, I've now decided I can't do the three, so I've dropped Turkish. Okay. But, but I, I say, you're going to at least do that. And even that, I haven't been able to maintain. The easiest mm -hmm. thing to do is I go in, there's a pod, new podcast in Arabic or Turkish. I just grab that, listen to it in my car. That's so mm -hmm. easy to do. Yeah. And yeah. Later on, I'm going to have to sit down and try and read that. I'm paying people to transcribe those. So yeah. that can then get in and read them. So I understand mm -hmm. them better. Yeah, I think sometimes people underestimate the power of listening, how much that actually helps you. Um, back when I lived in South Africa and still had a car, I would just pop in my textbook CD into the car and listen to those phrases over and over. And yeah. once I went back to the actual paper book and I was reading, I actually heard the same accent and voices of the people who, were, who recorded the CD. And that just helped me so much more. Absolutely. And, and, uh, I, I personally, I like our mini stories, the sort of point of view stories mm. with so much repetition. Uh, you yeah. Know, you heard the same thing over and over and over again. You notice a little more each time and that builds up then the momentum so that then you're able to use those. When yes. Use. yes. So no, listening is super powerful and it's yeah. the easiest thing to do. Mm. But uh, yeah, but Korean, we were talking about Korean the other day and and of course we both agree that if you have a, 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 if you have a knowledge of Chinese characters, Mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of the base of those East Asian languages. Yes. And so people who study Korean without the Chinese characters are at a disadvantage. Yes, I would, t I would say once you get to an intermediate or advanced level, knowing um, the base of the Korean characters, like the Sino-Korean characters, knowing where they come from really helps you to infer the meaning of new words. Mm -hmm. um, not that you're at a disadvantage if you can't read a or recognize a Chinese character. Right. But, um, even if it's written in Hangu, knowing which Chinese character right. it comes yeah. from will definitely help you. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And that's, you know, I always say Chinese tones are a problem, the characters are a problem, but mm. building your vocabulary actually is easier because you have all these little components that repeat. Yes. So you can anticipate what this new, or at least it's easier to remember them because it has yes. components that you've seen in other characters. So yeah. if you can do that, but they're hidden in Korean. Mm. So it's not obvious, even if you, you know, if it's a huck or whatever, it could be various forms of huck. Uh, yes. Whereas in Chinese or in Japanese, if you see the character, you know what that comes Absolutely. From. You have a good point. Yeah. So I always, uh, I wish there were some app where you, you're reading uh, Korean on the screen and you just toggle into Hanja. Mm. So. That's a good idea to develop something. Yeah. So your channel, you give people advice on language learning in general or specific advice on Asian languages? A bit of both, which sounds contradictory. So I did start out making general language learning videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of my videos accidentally went viral in Korea, totally unplanned. And I suddenly got an influx of uh, Korean viewers and viewers interested in Korean. Right. So I decided I do still want to keep making videos about language learning. So mm -hmm. not just in Korean, but because there are so many people interested in learning Korean, I do focus a lot on that. And it is my most fluent foreign language. So I do have a lot about Korean, right. Japanese, Mandarin, mm -hmm. and then general language learning tips. I envy you your Korean. I would love to be fluent in Korean. I envy your Chinese. <laughs> I got to put the effort in. That's what, it, you know, I saw the other day yeah. that uh, Lampo Yellow had said that... Uh, he was going to give up on Japanese or something like that. I heard, I saw that video, yeah. And there's no question that he could learn Japanese. I mean, he's a very, very good language learner. Yeah. But the motivation isn't there, the connection or something. Then mm. so with me in Korean, that's kind of been missing. I, you know, some bit of content that really, you know, right. grabs me, that kind of drives me. And so I keep on being distracted How do by other languages. So how do you avoid being distracted by new languages when you're 
not yet as good as you'd like to be in an old bank. Yeah, that is such a problem for me. I'm such a dabbler and I get very excited by shiny new things quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess for me, I just really need to have something that really grounds me motivation to learn a language mm -hmm. when i started with hungarian i was extremely interested in hungarian music right. and still to this day when i listen to hungarian songs i really feel something like oh, wow this language is so beautiful and that alone is actually enough to keep me going that with the hungarian people being extremely friendly and open to people learning their language mm -hmm. Um, that's something that keeps me going. Mostly my motivation for learning a foreign language is to understand um, entertainment or music or literature. Mm -hmm. Specifically, uh, because I'm a designer, right. any country that has a strong uh, sense of design or design education is really helpful as well. So what I'm trying to do in Spanish right now is uh, also part of motivation. So originally I was not planning on learning Spanish at all. Mm -hmm. A few things happened and here we are, I'm learning Spanish. But now after the three months of, you know, excitement, the honeymoon period of learning right. language, I need something really to keep me learning it. I can't just do it with music. Right. So I'm trying to read one um, user experience and user interface design article in Spanish every week. Mm -hmm. It's pretty simple because a lot of it is uh, terms that I can recognize, technology or design terms. Right. Um, but that's something that I can really have ground me. Like if I want to improve both my design skills and Spanish, this is something I can keep going. And it's hard to find something like that in all your languages. Like mm -hmm. I'm still trying to find a ground or a base of, as to why I want to learn Burmese other than I have two Burmese colleagues. There needs to be something more to that. And I'm sure I'll discover it once I get into the language deeper. Of course. And if you're doing, if you're doing say in Spanish, if you're using content that is, in an area that you're very familiar with, yes. it's just that much easier and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't mind the sort of dilettante approach because whatever exposure I have to like Romanian or Greek or Persian or Arabic, it's just interesting. You're learning stuff, you mm -hmm. how those people express themselves and you learn a little bit about the country. So, and it's, it's lovely that like you are an experienced language learner and if you decide you can learn Burmese, you'll learn Burmese. If you decide you want to learn Hungarian, you'll learn Hungarian. Hmm. But you, it's like you're at this buffet table and you can choose to have this or you can choose to have that. It's you terrible. Can, you can leave some on your plate and go and grab something else if you want. That's actually a very good metaphor. But I do, there is a lot of criticism for those kinds of people. Um, especially there's a video I uploaded this year for my uh, 12 language foci for the year. Mm -hmm. And the intention is not to say I want to be fluent in 12 languages. The intention is I already speak some of these languages. They're at maintenance mode. Some of these I just want to learn how to read and write. Some of them I just want to improve my speaking. Uh, so it's not 12 languages all out for one year. But people who just see that video and that title, they say, that is such a terrible technique. You should just learn one language to fluency. But they don't even know that I already do speak a few to fluency and I'm just adding on. Yeah. Um, but I just decided, you know, I'm doing it for fun. I'm not doing it for anyone else. If this is what I enjoy, this is what enriches my life. I'll just keep doing it. You know, I couldn't agree more. And and people tell you should do this or you should do that. Yeah. Language learning is is for me. Like I don't yes. care. You don't have to yeah. like what I'm doing. You can criticize, and that's why I think we shouldn't criticize others. We shouldn't criticize yeah. how well or poorly they speak a language. We shouldn't criticize what they like to do. It's like. Yes. Moses McCormick, who speaks an amazing, you know Moses McCormick, yeah. Yes. So he speaks an amazing number of languages. He's not, he's not, you know, brilliant in all of them, but he's mm -hmm. quite good in yes. quite a variety of languages. So why would people criticize him? Why is that a bad thing to do? He has sampled to a, you know, a fair degree of, of capability, so many different yeah. languages. He has a sense of, he has a bit of a finger in, I don't know, Estonia or... <laughs> Cambodia yeah. or whatever it might be you know he's a man of the world in the true sense so if that's yeah. then i had once an exchange with this guy matt in japan and he he spent two years on nothing but japanese pitch accent mm. I mean, how can you focus mm. on japanese pitch accent for two years it doesn't matter but but that's him so yeah. that makes him happy all the more power to him yeah you can't insist that other people do this yes and also dictating what which languages other people should learn. I've had people who are very passionate about their home language, which is wonderful to see, but the amount of comments I get in a day about, will you please learn XYZ language? Or when are you going to learn? 
I don't know. I'm not interested. Don't force me. No, I mean, with all kinds of reasons, you, you should learn this language. No, I'll learn No. It. <laughs> anyway, very nice to talk to you. And as I say, we'll put a link up to your channel so people can, now that they've met you, they can follow up, especially if they're learning Asian languages or just to get a sense of your enthusiasm for learning languages in general. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Steven. We'll see you at the next Polyglot Conference. Yes, see you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay. Hi, Steve. Hi, Lindy. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great, so great to have you here. So we had the uh, we were able to meet each other at Polyglot Conference in Japan earlier this year. Correct. And I do believe there are many people who know you and watch your videos online. But for those of my viewers who don't, would you please introduce yourself? Okay, well, my name is Steve Kaufman. I live in Vancouver, Canada. I'm uh, basically retired from the wood business where I worked for over 40 years. But I have a great interest in languages, languages that I learned. Uh, I was a diplomat for seven years. I studied in France. I learned Chinese as a diplomat. And in the last 10, 12 years or more, I've become particularly interested in learning languages. You know, I'm 74 now. I've learned, I don't know, 10 languages since I'm 60. Getting some funny sound there. Uh, so some people say you can't, you can't learn languages past the age of eight or something. So that's not true. And uh, I'm also with my son, uh, we have created a website called link, L-I-N-G-Q.com, which is kind of how I like to learn. And I have my YouTube channel. Bingo, Steve. Great. Thank you. I'll put all those links below. Okay. So, Steve, I'm going to dive into the very pressing questions that I have for you already. Okay. The first one, something that I receive a lot, is how do you manage to learn so many languages at the same time? Uh, the question is more of how do you balance your time? Do you schedule different languages for different days? How do you go about that? Okay. Uh, usually, like I typically have not learned languages at the same time. I tend to focus on one language at a time. That has always been my pattern. So, uh, you know, I spent, uh, and, you know, it's, it's become faster, but I would spend like two years on Russian. Yeah, maybe the first year I didn't even speak, just lots of listening and reading. Czech was mm -hmm. like six months. Then I had to go to Romania. So I spent two months on learning with Romania. And then my wife and I were heading off to Greece. So I spent actually six months on Greek. But then it's only recently that I said, so then I started Arabic. And here in Vancouver, there's not so many Arabic speakers, but there's lots of uh, Iranians. Oh, okay. So I've learned the writing system. Why don't I learn, you know, Farsi, Persian? Yes. So that made it two. And then my wife was watching Turkish, you know, soap operas on Netflix. And I said, that's kind of neat. I'll try and learn Turkish. So briefly, I had a period where I was trying to learn three languages at the same time. Yeah. And my initial approach was to go three months, three months, three months. And then at the end of the three months, I fallen so far behind in the first one that I said, that's no good. I'll try and learn them together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I said, I'm going to make sure that, because it's difficult to control. Like it's not, I, I don't spend my day language learning. Like there's lots of stuff happening, yeah. you know, yeah. just stuff that I do. And so I said, I'm going to force myself to create what we call links. I got to save a hundred new words every mm -hmm. day in each one of the three languages. And mm -hmm. I was able to maintain that for about a, maybe a month or so. And then I started not doing it. Like I was staying up at 11 o'clock at night to make sure I got my hundred, you know, new yeah. stuff. It was like, what am I, I don't want this obligation. I want to do what I like yeah. doing. What I like doing is I like listening to stuff. So, and then I said, I'm going to drop Turkish because the, the Persian and the, the Arabic reinforce each other because they're both in the Arabic script. So yes. every time I'm in there, I'm improving my ability to read. And right. you no, know, it takes a long time to get good at reading in another language. Like that's, yeah. You may learn the Cyrillic alphabet, you may learn Hangul, and it's not that difficult. But to get good at it, you actually mm. have to read a lot. Mm. At least I do. Maybe you're able to do, you know, to progress more quickly. So I decided that now, so now I have no particular routine. Uh, I have certain podcasts in Persian and Arabic. I'll go and grab the latest podcast, listen to it, don't understand 20, 30 percent come home that night and I'll try and read through it on link and see if I can figure out what they were talking about. Mm. And that's about it. No, no system. 
But then the question would be, how do you maintain the languages that you started learning years ago? So maybe Russian or Romanian. How do you yeah, keep it? Well, first of all, Russian is in that first dozen languages that I can turn on. Like, I, I, I have no problem with Russian. Mm. So, mm -hmm. But Romanian and Greek, they're in that other group, which is, I can't turn them on. And, but uh, it, because my, my learning has been based on a lot of listening, particularly mi heavy to our mini stories. So if I spend a few hours on mini stories in Greek, it'll, I, have no, I have no fear that it'll be gone. You know, mm. I'll, I'll remember when I was listening to that. Uh, yeah. The words come back. Yes. So, so, and, and, and uh, you know, obviously when I go to speak, I'll stumble, but that's always the case at first. But, mm. but I can ramp up my ability by, doing a lot of listening and reading and then I can go and, and start talking to someone and really struggle for the first 15, 20 minutes and then it just starts to come out. So I never worry about that. I never worry about that. There's no way. I don't think you can maintain at a, you know, instant, you know, deliverable, high quality, blah, 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 20 languages. Uh, maybe that person exists. I can't do it. Me neither. No. Something that I'm realizing these days is how how fluid these languages really are in terms of how they fluctuate. So I'm studying for a Korean exam coming up and I'm focusing all my efforts on Korean right now. Mm -hmm. And when I switch over to Japanese, I find that my current Japanese accent sounds very Korean. Right. And it's super frustrating because I can hear myself and I don't know how to fix it. But then, you know, a few months later or a few months ago when I'm really focusing on Japanese, my Japanese accent is great. And then when I speak Korean, Korean people are like, oh, you sound like a Japanese person speaking Korean. You don't sound like an American speaking Korean. It's weird. And it's not really something that I can control after so ever many years of learning these languages. It's just, they're very fluid. But, but th that's true with that, everything but our, our native language. So if you were to go to Jeju Island or something, or if you were to go to uh, you know, Osaka, you're Japanese. If I go to Osaka, I start sounding more like someone from Osaka. Yeah, because in our in the languages that we learn, I think we are very easily influenced by the environment. Yes, absolutely. Whereas our native language, it kind of stays. Yeah. But even there, we might be influenced. Another question I get often is, um, some people feel that polyglots are like some kind of secret society and you have to be able to speak a number of languages to be able to call yourself a polyglot. What do you think about the term polyglot and the community and exclusivity? See, I don't like the word polyglot. Mm -hmm. uh, most English speakers don't know what the word means. They've it's never true. Heard it. They've never heard I know it. you prefer the term linguist. Linguist, because that is in fact the English term. Term. It's mm -hmm. not the Spanish term, it's not the French term, it's mm -hmm. not the Russian, German, but it is the English term. If you yeah. look it up in a dictionary, most people don't know what linguistics is. Yeah. Never heard of linguistics. They don't know what it's, what, that such a thing exists. Have never heard the term polyglot. Linguist means someone who's good at languages. Good at languages. So mm -hmm. even, to my mind, I would much prefer we call ourselves language lovers. So if, if I'm, and I'm sure you're the same way. If you meet someone who speaks one other language, but speaks it very well, I'm full of admiration. Yes. One, one language, person yeah. speaks Japanese only, say French and Japanese. I'm full yeah. of admiration, full of admiration. And yes. I think that's the way people are in the polyglot community. People yeah. are not competing with each other. They don't no. look down their nose at someone who only speaks two languages. Absolutely. It's just learning languages is fun. Projecting yeah. yourself, what I've, what, why I'm full of admiration is because here's this person who is, let's say, French and actually is behaving like a Japanese. Mm. Wow. You know, that is very interesting to me. That's, and if you can do it in three languages, so much the better. So you're projecting yourself into this other persona. You're mm. imitating your culture to some extent. Yeah. It's fun. And I think that's what our group is all about. Yeah. And, and it's not, uh, we're not competing, you know, who has the most languages or who speaks which language. Absolutely. Speaks, so. That's right. Happy to hear that coming from you. I'm sure that will give a lot of inspiration to people. Uh, and, and we should encourage more. I feel that we want to be a little mm -hmm. careful that we don't get too, you know, we're all talking about learning, uh, I don't know, some, uh, you know, esoteric language. It's, it's all about, we, most people struggle to learn languages. Yeah. Yeah. We, I still struggle with all of them yeah, every day. Yeah. We all struggle, but you, you get there. But there are people yeah. who go to Spanish class for 10 years and can't speak Spanish. Mm. There are people who go through school and can't speak when they graduate, you know. Mm. Do you so, think it's yeah. technique or it's mindset? 
Uh, I think it's, well, you know, I think mindset is huge. Mindset is huge. Uh, you have to, so the person who goes to, and I know people like this, you know, they go to their Spanish class at the library. They've been doing it for 10 years. And uh, I think it's tech, to some extent it's technique. They don't listen enough, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, they, at some level, don't ever think they're going to become fluent. Whereas mm -hmm. both you and I, it, it might be a struggle, but if I'm going to learn that language, if I put enough time into it, I will become fluent. Mm -hmm. And I won't stop if I, I'm determined to get enough vocabulary yes. that, that I'll get there and I'll get to where I can listen to things of interest to me and all of that. I know, and I know that if I continue using the language and to me, using the language includes listening and reading. I don't That's have right. to be speaking to be using the language. The yeah. brain is converting this to meaning. That's using the language. And if I mm -hmm. do enough of it, I'll get there. And mm -hmm. every time I'm doing it, I'm getting better. So that's all positive. If I sat in a classroom and I had a teacher explaining stuff to me and giving me drills that I'm going to get three of them wrong and it's frustrating, I think mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't get anywhere either. So yeah. I think that it's partly learning technique. It's partly, obviously, the person who goes to the library all the time doesn't have the, the, the sort of self-confidence or doesn't have that initiative to mm -hmm. take charge of their own language learning. Yeah. So all of those things. And time. It takes time. That's why, again, listening is so great because you can do it anytime, anywhere. But it's, it's, it's got to make sense. It's got to be stuff of interest. It can't be, you know, repetition is okay for a while, but repetition, we're, we can tolerate the repetition during the honeymoon period, as you yeah. know, which is a great yes. term. I like that term. <laughs> Once you pass the honeymoon period, you got to get something interesting to dig into. Yes. You can't be repeating silly phrases all the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Then lastly, I have a lot of Japanese viewers. Would you be comfortable in having a little chat in Japanese? Of course. I'd even like to do it in Korean just to show you how bad my Korean is. Oh, then what do you want to speak? I want to speak Japanese. I want to speak Japanese. Yes. I want to speak Japanese. But I can't speak Japanese. But I can't speak Japanese. 한국어 되게 에, 읽기 읽기 어려워요. 아 읽기가 어려워요? 예 어려워. 듣기 음. 듣기가 어려. Everything is 어려워요. 괜찮아요. <웃음> 어 그럼 일본어 노후가 락크 됐을까? 됐어요. 일본어 뭐 일본이 규년에 쓴 듯한 듯이요. 아, 쓴한 듯이요, 네. 네, 네. 中国語で漢字、まあ、3000か4000勉強してね。だからまあ大体日本語の漢字、ま、読めたわけですよ。それで、まあ、日本にもちろん一生懸命勉強してね。学校も行かなかったけど、毎日たくさん聞いて。はい
ですよね。とあの韓国語で韓国語のですねその政治に関するポッドキャストを見つかったり、うんうんえー、そして金まあ、まあ、忘れましたけどもそのその文化の専門の人がポッドキャストやり,やりましたけどもうトランスクリプトがないんですよ文字がないんですよね聞くだけでわからまあ3割4割わかるけれども7割はあの理解できればもっといいわけですよだから、うん、で,で,で,でその後まあ他の言葉を勉強したりプレペルシャ語アラブ語を勉強したりしてえだからロシア語を勉強した前に韓国語が始まったわけですよ。今、ロシア語はもう、ロシア、この間、ウクライナに行っ,て行ってですね、テレビでウクライナ語もロシア語も全然問題なく話しました。うも,うもちろんミスがあるけどね、えー、ミステイクがあるけども、まあ、全然問題ないんですよ。しかし、韓国語では、韓国語ではそれできないんですよ。なるほど。逆に私は、かあの中国語は、同じだと思います。そう日本語を勉強する前に中国語も勉強したんですけど、今までもちょっとめっちゃ難しいと思います。なんか話が出ないんですね、うん、中国語で。まあ、中国語はね、それ僕、たくさん聞きました、中国語。うん、た例えば、シャンシャン、シャンシャン、これあのコミックのね。そして、もう、CD も。僕の後ろはもうたくさん CD あるんですよ。中国語。中国語たくさん CD あるんですよ。たくさん。えー、単語家にいいとか、何でもたくさんあるんですよ。だたくさん聞かないとダメなんですよ。そしてまあ、で、あの、中国の友達もいるんですよ、バンクーブでね。だから中国に住んだことないんですよ。で中国人がね、中国人がね、えー、あ、ちょうどはんはんよりにおめよ、大語じゃいと思う。めよ大語。もしめたいと。もたいと。だからは中国語は実。私に伝えた香港。え、香港。え、今に中国語で答えましょうか。いや、日本
Hope to see you at the next Polyglot Conference. Exactly. Are you going to Mexico? I hope so. If I can afford a ticket, it's very far from Singapore. It is indeed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Steve. Bye.